I have never heard more nonsense on the internet than I have with people discussing the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G. This is my two-month review of this device, and this is going to be for real buyers. This is for people who understand what they're getting when they pay $400 for a device. And it's not going to be a comparison, again, to the Pixel 7a. I've done that. I'll link that video at the end, but I'm going to reference it because it's a device that people point to when they say, don't get this. Look at all these features you get on the 7a there's zero reason to pick up an a54 and i could not disagree more when you're looking at this device number one i really look at the display of this phone it is an absolutely gorgeous panel fantastic and i i've seen so many criticisms on the internet saying well it's just a little bit bigger than the pixel 7a that's why everybody likes it incorrect it's not just that it's a bigger display it's a significantly better display it's a lot brighter not a little bit brighter a lot brighter to where you can actually see it. And in daylight, it's comfortable. The colors and contrast are significantly better as well. You want to talk about the 120 hertz over the 90 hertz? You can. Not a huge deal to me. You notice it a little bit, but I will take the other two things, certainly. I will take the color and I will take the brightness on the display. Multitasking is something that everybody threw at me in performance. Everybody's basing their criticisms on this device, or a lot of people, on this one video on the internet of a gentleman trying to open, I think it was three or four apps in the matter of three seconds. There is never, ever going to be an instance when you do that. Any sort of human using this device, and you can tell by the comments on the other videos I've done on the A54, people who actually have this phone and use it like it. The criticisms often become, and this is the one uh, rebuttal that I always give people on Twitter or people on my channel when they say they don't like the phone or it's trash or it's Exynos or whatever. I asked them one simple question. Have you used it? Have you lived with it for any significant amount of time? And the answer is almost universally no. If you use this phone and you tell me, oh, it's too slow, it lags too much, I can't handle it, then you know what? You're probably coming from a flagship. I get it. You're probably coming from a device that you're used to it being a little bit snappier. But if you've used it and decide it's not for you, you know what? I can live with that. But do not, for a second, listen to the advice of somebody who is not use this phone because performance wise it's fine is it snappy no it's not the fastest device in the world however there is a difference between speed and processing power and lag and i think people get those confused what this phone does is not lag it takes a beat it takes a moment to load up and process stuff that's not lagging lagging to me is when you're scrolling through stuff and you're trying to do a bunch of things, and it just can't handle it. You can't get out of apps. You can't get into apps. You can't use the camera app, which was a significant problem with last year's A53. Those things have been resolved with the A54 5G. So I am perfectly happy with that. And if they try to give you any stuff about the Exynos, last year's 1280 Exynos was not good. This year's is good. But if you... <laughs> If somebody tries to say something about the Pixel 7a and like, well, it's not an Exynos, well, wait until they find out what Tensor's based on. If you look that up, you'll find that they keep quiet in a hurry. Speakers, really good. Dual speakers, good, rich sound. It beats the tinny sound and awful sound that you get with the Pixel 7a speaker system. So that's something that you want to look at. Really good sound coming out of this. A lot of people need a micro SD card uh, expansion slot. This is going to be the most powerful Samsung that you could get. The newest Samsung you could buy new. That's going new. Remember, I said that. I know their older flagships have micro uh, SD expandable storage. This is the, the best new device that you could get that still has a micro SD card slot. And a lot of people want that. That's something that's a binary issue for you. Same thing with wireless charge. This doesn't have wireless charge. But that's an issue. You either need it or you don't. It's not subjective. It's not something that you look at and compare devices. It's binary. You need it. You get it. You don't need it. You don't get it. That's kind of the deal with that. So I don't really look at that. Battery life is significantly better on this phone. Six and a half hours of screen on time, which is good. Samsung devices, you know, Exynos processors, you kind of look at battery hits and stuff that happen there. This one is not suffering from that because you're not getting the most powerful processor in the world. So you are getting some battery savings because of that, even though it is pushing this 1080p display. People are saying it can't multitask. Uh, that's incorrect. All right, so let's pull it up here. Let's go here. Let's do Twitter. Well, I'll load up Twitter. And then we'll go back, load up Discord. Okay? And I'll go ahead and put Discord on top of, if I could get it to work, technical difficulties. I'll put Discord here, or put that here, and we'll put 
Discord right here. Okay? No problem scrolling here. Okay? No problem scrolling here. That's multitasking. And as long as you know how to do it, which I couldn't for a moment, you're going to be fine. Right? That's multitasking. Everybody says on the internet that hasn't used it. Oh, I can't multitask. It, it, it breaks down when you multitask. It multitasks just fine. Then you come to the price. Don't pay full price for this. Don't pay $450. I'll put a link in the description. If you have T-Mobile, Mint Mobile, Metro, you're going to get a deal on this. Amazon right now, $340. Pretty hard to beat for that. It is an excellent build quality. You got glass, you got a plastic frame, but it's a solid plastic frame. You got nice glass on here. This is going to be quite a good deal for $340. The US version, the regular one you're going to use on AT&T and stuff is still closer to $400. That's a decision you can make. I think it'd still be worth it. It's a good device, especially if you want Samsung. You want One UI 5.1. Lots of reasons to like that. The Samsung updates, I think, have been the best out there on the Android side. So that might be a reason why you want to pick up this device. 400 bucks, but use your brain. If it's 450, don't get it. Wait for a deal. There's been plenty of deals on this device. If you could snag it for, for 350, some people on carrier deals or whatever in their country were snagging them for as cheap as 300. If you're able to pick up this device for 300, run, don't walk. You're, you're winning at life. You're doing a really good job. Let's talk cameras as well. Camera. A lot of people uh, uh, give this uh, phone a lot of headaches because of camera. Really nice camera. They've improved it. I'll put up these shots. Are these shots that you're not scrolling by? You're not double clicking on Instagram to give a heart to? Are these photos you're ashamed to share on Facebook or Twitter? Are these photos you're not posted online? I don't think so. They're good. The shutter speed was okay. Is it the fastest shutter in the world? No. But it's not the full two-second shutter that it was last year with the A53. Significant improvement over that device. And the camera's pretty good. People talk about this, this gap between the 7A camera and the A54 camera. It's not as dramatic as it used to be. The 7A absolutely still gets the check mark for the better camera. But is it twice as good? No, I don't, I don't believe so. The Samsung still does a decent job. And you get the triple lens set up so you get some versatility with your camera system there. Overheating was a big one. People complaining about that. Look, when I was testing this for Android Police, I ran 4K video for 15 minutes and it got just a little warm. So if you're doing intense gaming on this, which I would not advise, if you're a gamer, look elsewhere. It runs stuff on low settings. It's not a good gaming machine, despite the beautiful display. If you're playing Pokemon Go and stuff, you're going to be fine. But if you're playing Call of Duty Mobile, Genshin Impact, stuff like that, you're going to notice slowdowns. Absolutely with that. It's not a processing beast. No one is trying to say that it is. But if you're a regular user, if you're somebody that's going through your social media, you're going through your Samsung tabs or internet tabs, you're going through your Chrome tabs, you're doing 95% of the stuff that you're going to want to do on a daily basis, you're going to be able to do, do it well on your A54. And with that display, which mind you, you use 100% of the time that you're using the phone, using the display, it's going to be gorgeous to look at. It's one of those panels, and it happens on a few phones, mostly Samsung's because of how quality their panels are. When I pick it up and I use it again, I'm like, wow, this is a really creamy, good saturation contrast display. Beautiful display, panel to look at. Fantastic device overall. I used it for 10 days straight. Last year, I couldn't use the A53 for like two days. I wanted to throw it out a window. It was just an absolute disaster of a phone. This one I used for 10 days straight as my main device without any issue. And when I pulled the SIM out of it, I was like, you know what? I didn't really mind that. I didn't mind going down from a $1,200 device to this device. It was good. And if you base it on what you're actually going to pay, which is sub $400, hopefully $350, you're getting a lot of phone. That the complaints, I think, are nonsense. They're people coming from $1,200 devices that expect the world of this thing because it's a Samsung device and they're not getting it and they're disappointed because they look over and they see, well, Tensor 2 in, in the 7A and Tensor 2 being in the, the other flagships for Pixel night and day. This phone has advantages too. It will do everything you need it to do. So if you're looking in the market for something, an alternative, and you like Samsung devices, don't be ashamed of this. And if somebody's out there critiquing this phone a little too heavily, ask them if they've actually used it. Because I think I think nine out of 10 times they haven't. And you could go back and look at the comment sections of my videos, a bunch of happy people using their A54. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve-licious day.